Hi, I'm Dave Hostetter, curator of the planetarium at the Lafayette Science Museum in Lafayette, Louisiana, and this is Acadiana Skies. We're going to take a look at the moon this week. It's the week of Monday, April 27th. Let's look over toward the western sky to start out. We've got the moon right up here, a very nice waxing crescent moon. And there are basically three ways to look at it that are pretty good. With the unaided eye, with binoculars, or with a telescope. The moon is a great object and you really can't go wrong with it. So if you have nothing more than the unaided eye, just go out and look at the moon each night. You'll see it change its position. You'll see its phase change every night. So for instance, this is April 27th. Last night, the moon was not too far away from the planet Venus, and of course much closer to us than Venus, but in the same general direction. By tonight, the moon has moved farther away, and that's because of the way it goes around the Earth. So every night, it's going to change its position and change where it is and what it looks like in the sky. Just with the unaided eye, you can see that. But if you are lucky enough to have a pair of binoculars or a telescope, you get even more to see. So let's home in on it right here. If you have a telescope, your telescope may do some kind of strange things to you, like it might show the image backwards or upside down or both. Don't let that throw you. Just keep an eye on the moon and how things are changing and you'll be able to find things. But this is what it's going to look like tonight. This smooth dark area here is Mara Chrysium, the Sea of Crises. There are a lot of craters around here. This bright area is lighted by the sun and this part right here is lighted by the Earth. Here, we've got sunlight reflecting off the Earth, up to the moon, and off the moon to our eyes. It's sometimes called Earth shine. You can see it easily with the unaided eye, and when you have a waxing crescent like this, you can see it with binoculars or a telescope also. But watch what happens. This is the moon for Monday, April 27th. By Tuesday, it'll look different. It will have gone a little ways around the Earth, and so a little more of the side toward Earth will be lighted by the sun and we'll be able to see more. Along here, along the terminator where the sun is rising on the moon, that's where the shadows are longest and that's where you'll see the most detail. Here, in fact, is part of the Sea of Tranquility. By the 29th, by Wednesday, more yet is visible, including part of the Sea of Serenity. And every night you're going to see the moon a little bit differently because the phase will be a little different. And because the moon is rising and setting at different times each day, it'll be at a different orientation in the sky also. So don't let that throw you either. Now here we are at Sunday in the end of the week and we have a waxing gibbous moon instead of a crescent moon. There is Mara Chrysium. There's the Sea of Tranquility, I guess right there. This is the Sea of Serenity. This is part of the Imbrium Basin. And when you're looking at that, it's a very picturesque area. This flat floored crater right there is called Plato. Look for a little gash in the rock right there. It's a, called the Alpine Valley. And you can see that pretty well even with a small telescope. This area is sometimes called the Great Peninsula. There are a lot of craters there, very old region of the moon, surrounded by old lava flows but still younger than this particular area. And if you're interested in knowing some of the things that you're looking at on the moon, go to our website, lafayettesciencemuseum.org, and in the planetarium part, you can find the Lunar Top 10 for Backyard Telescopes. That has 10 different regions of the moon to look at, all visible in small telescopes at reasonably low power, and it tells you a little bit about what the feature is, the best phase of the moon to see it, and why it's interesting to see and what it's like geologically. So those are some things you can do to understand more about the moon. Let's go ahead and go back to tonight's sky, back to the 27th, when we're going to have it as a thin crescent moon. And I would encourage you to go outside, keep your social distance, but take a look at the moon, whether you use unaided eye, binoculars, or a telescope, and watch it night after night, because it really is a great show in the sky. Thanks for watching.